For those who have been following along on my channel know that I recently bought a wrecked car and I rebuilt it to be my daily driver. And since this channel revolves around financial topics, I decided to make a video on the numbers behind everything and to see if it was actually worth it or not. And stick around till the end of the video, I throw in two tips that benefit anybody who basically owns a car. Perfect. First off, if this is the first time you're seeing my face, my name is Eli Consta. I quit my nine to five job earlier this year with one goal in mind, which is to never be an employee again. So if that kind of stuff interests you, definitely subscribe and follow along on my journey. All right, so let's jump right into it. I won my car for 12.7K and so I'll get into the fees and how much it costs to be delivered straight to my front door. But a little bit on the bidding, I was not intending to pay that much. I kind of got caught up in the bidding process with my emotions and whatnot because I just quit my job and I had a bunch of free time on my hands so I really wanted this car I actually changed my max limit during the bidding uh, I have a video of it actually it's pretty funny nine five come on and we're still far away from my max though let's go eleven five if anything go eleven nine I think that's where I'm gonna stop at one more and that's it yeah screw it yeah screw it one more one more <laughs> damn this auto bidding yeah yeah, one more. One more, one more. This is it, yeah, this is it right here. Boom! Sold! Yeah, so I ended up winning it for 12.7K, which might seem like it's really good because on Copart, it says that the retail value is 31K. But don't ever trust that they kind of pump up the numbers to make it look better but what ended up saving me in the end was i actually found out that that is the sport model and not the lux like copart initially said it was so that helped me out later down the road but to get into the invoice that copart gave me i'll throw it up on the screen right now there's basically just a bunch of random fees and one of them is 59 dollars to open the gate like sign me up i will do that all day i'll open gates for 60 bucks a pop <laughs> After all those fees, I had to pay taxes, which was another 1.2K and dealer fees. One of the reasons I also was pretty lenient on bidding was because this auction is literally like a few miles away from my house. So I knew I would pay less in transportation fees. Transportation fees were like 50 bucks to get it delivered to my house through a hookup. So from winning it for 12.7K, by the time I got delivered to my house, it was already 15.3K. And that's still without any of the repairs for paint i ended up paying 700 dollars and then also the car had slight frame damage that i knew about that was another 600 dollars at the end i had to get the windshield replaced because you can't get it registered if it has like a crack or anything like that so that was another 220 and i ended up buying a bunch of parts probably like 20 30 different pieces so i don't remember all of that but i just remember the car after everything basically came out to 21k give or take maybe like a few bucks over but you might be asking yourself it came out to 21k and copart said that retail value is 31k so you still got it for basically 30 percent off but the cars don't sell for that much. So I actually wanted to know how much it would sell for. So this is the first tip. I threw it on Craigslist for two weeks and now Craigslist for automobile posts actually charges $5 now. And I only got two responses. One of them was gonna give me 21,500 max, which I mean, that's a really slim margin. That's like 500 bucks. That would not be worth it at all. But this is where the tip number one comes in. If you are going to be selling your car used, definitely throw it on Facebook Marketplace. It's free. And the, literally the first day that I threw it on there, I had 10 people messaging me. My highest offer was 23K with the following up offer of 22K. And given that it took me three months from it being delivered to my doorstep to it being ready for sale, that doesn't seem too good. But all in all, if you cut out the time that I waited to get my frame done and paint, if I had all that done already and I had the parts all in my garage, I could have put it all back together within a week easy, probably like a weekend. But that's besides the point because I bought the car for the sole reason of it being my personal car. So if you just take the lower offer that I got, which was 22K, you would still have to pay taxes on that. So I did the math in my district, you'd have to pay 8.75% in taxes which would be basically $1,900, 
On top of that, about $200 for registration. So even if I bought the car that I wanted for 22K, which was pretty hard to find the same exact one that I wanted. Nonetheless, if I bought it for 22K, the car would basically come out to 24 something K. So I did save $3,000. So the main question is, was it worth it or not? For me, honestly, it was because I did save about three to four thousand dollars. And on top of that, I developed a relationship with my car because I actually put it back together. On top of that, I started an Instagram theme page. I am basically getting free content and I'm monetizing my Instagram page, which if you subscribe to my channel, I have a video coming out soon on me drop shipping to my theme page with print on demand stuff. It's going to be pretty interesting. And last but not least, I definitely learned a monetizable skill going through the process. I mean, I know exactly how much to bid for the car. And after studying all the diagrams of the front end, I know exactly what parts to order ahead of time now. It just speeds everything up for the future because I know it like the back of my hand. And the second tip is if you ever need a part for your car, for instance, I needed hood hinges. And when I went on eBay and typed in 2019 Infiniti Q50 hood hinge, it came out to like 80 90 dollars but when i went on the dealer's page and i got the actual part number that i needed i threw it on ebay and i found one for like 40 dollars and that's because a lot of these cars reuse same parts people are making money selling the same part under a different name so if you ever end up needing a part for your car search it up by its part number and not by the actual make because it could be more pricier and to end it all off if you are thinking about doing this don't get deterred that you need to know your way around a screwdriver or whatever because copar offers a vast majority of cars there's cars that are just basically totaled out because of hail damage or vandalism so you don't really need to know your way around you know mechanical stuff to do this kind of stuff but as always if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and i'll see you on the next one